In this video we're going to look at the ligand substitution reactions of the transition elements and we're only going to use the ones that you need to know for the OCR exam. So to start with we'll just remind ourselves of the definition for a ligand. So they are molecules or ions that form coordinate bonds or dative covalent bonds with a central transition metal ion. And the reason they can do this is because they possess a lone pair of electrons. Ligand substitution reactions are as simple as they sound. Basically, we're just going to take one ligand off the central transition metal ion and we're going to replace it with a different ligand. I'm going to show you the test tube reactions and we're going to focus on the colour changes and the equations for the reactions. The first ligand substitution reaction we'll look at is that between aqueous copper 2 plus ions and aqueous ammonia. So in this test tube I've got a solution of aqueous copper 2 plus ions. You can tell because of the blue colour in the test tube and I've drawn up there on the, the board the, the structure of the complex ion that's causing this blue colour and that's the copper hexa aqua 2 plus ion. So we've got those six water ligands all attached from the lone pair on the oxygen. So that's your dative covalent bond between the oxygen and the central transition metal ion. Um, six ligands arranged octahedrally. So we've got that bond angle of 90 degrees between um, everything in the molecule and coordination number is six because there are six dative covalent bonds formed between ligands and the central ion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few drops of aqueous ammonia. So if we just have a look at what happens inside the test tube and then I'll probably bring it a bit closer to the camera. Not sure if you can see that, but I'll just bring it a bit closer. So hopefully you can see we've got a blue precipitate. And that is, we've seen this before when we've reacted aqueous hydroxide ions with aqueous copper 2 plus ions. That is copper 2 hydroxide. I'll explain how that's been formed in a second. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flood this with some more aqueous ammonia. So I'm, I'm now adding lots of aqueous ammonia. There's that precipitate very clear now. So I'm just going to keep adding. You can see it's getting darker blue. And hopefully something will happen to it. I'm probably going to need to take it out of the, the clamp and give it a, a shake. So I've added a little bit more aqueous ammonia and I've given it a good shake and you can see that the blue precipitate has completely dissolved and we've got this nice deep blue coloured solution formed in the test tube. So we've had two reactions essentially taking place so I'll go through them now on the board. The reason we get two reactions is because ammonia is actually performing two different roles in the reaction. Initially it's acting as a base so it's accepting a proton and then when there are greater amounts of ammonia so when it's in, a, in an excess it actually acts as a ligand. So we'll go through each of the reactions and explain what's going on. To explain the ammonia acting as a base, remember that's a proton acceptor, we have to take um, things to a higher level than the syllabus requires. So don't worry too much about this. Um, it won't be tested on the exam, uh, but you may well be interested in the reasons for the two roles of ammonia. So I've written an equilibrium up on the board there. 
So we've got the hexa aqua copper two plus iron on the left, and that's in equilibrium with those two ions there. I don't know if you can see what's happened, but essentially this hexa aqua two plus ion has actually donated a proton. So it's actually acting as a weak acid. So in that bottle there of copper hexa aqua two plus, we've actually got this equilibrium in there. And I'll explain what's happening in a little bit more detail with this diagram. So here's the copper hexa aqua two plus ion. We've got a, a positively charged ion in the middle and obviously that's going to be attracting the electron pairs in. So I'll use this water molecule to demonstrate. So the electron density is being drawn towards the center and effectively that's going to weaken this bond here and it breaks. Um, the electron pair will be pulled in there and essentially that bond breaks and of course this is going to come off as H plus. So when we put those first few drops of ammonia into the test tube, the ammonia is acting as a base and it's reacting with the H plus ions that have been produced in this equilibrium. And obviously that's going to re lower the concentration of H plus ions and Le Chatelier's principle would say that the equilibrium will want to minimise that change and so it shifts over to the right hand side. And the knock on effect of that is a second water molecule will um, donate a proton and we'll end up with four waters, two hydroxides and we'll lose that charge. So there's the formula of the product for you and you can see that essentially what we've made is copper to hydroxide which when we looked at the precipitation reactions we saw this result. So there's the test tube back with the result of the second reaction and we've already established that ammonia is now acting as a ligand. Basically when the ammonia is in excess it acts as a ligand and we get the reaction on the board there takes place and so we have four ammonia ligands um, are involved. They replace four of the water molecules in this hexa aqua two plus ion and we get this deep blue solution. So this, this observation here is because of the formation of this solution. So that's copper with two waters still attached and four ammonia ligands and the two plus charge is still there because the ligands are all neutral and the copper's two plus and there's the four water molecules that have been substituted. So this is the ligand substitution reaction. If the ammonia was in a very high concentration we'd actually get all six water molecules substituted and we'd end up with what's called the copper hexaamine two plus ion and that has a different colour, I think it's a purple colour. Um, but for the OCR specification, this is the reaction that they want you to um, talk about. So yes, it is possible to replace all six water molecules, but in in practice, this is what we this is the reaction that we use. The next reaction that we're going to look at is the reaction between aqueous copper two plus ions. So again, we've got the blue color in the test tube there. We've got the hexa aqua copper two plus ion, and we're going to react that with aqueous chloride ions. And our source of aqueous chloride ions is concentrated hydrochloric acid. So in goes the concentrated hydrochloric acid. And have a look at the test tube. You can definitely see something's happening. So we've got a green colour in the test tube now. There are actually streaks of yellow, I can see streaks of yellow running down the test tube, um, but obviously that's definitely changed to green. I'll just add another pipette full of acid and 
Okay, we'll, we'll leave it there and we'll look at the equation and we'll explain where this green colour has come from. So there's the equation. You can see what's happened. We've started out with the hexa aqua copper 2 plus ion, which is blue, and all of the water ligands have been replaced, but this time only four chloride ligands have um, joined to the central copper 2 plus ion. So the complex ion that's formed is this one here, CuCl4, and the overall charge is 2 minus, just explain that, Cu2 plus, but four Cl minuses will leave an overall charge of 2 minus, and of course all six water molecules have been substituted, and so they sit at the end of the equation. Now, that's a reversible reaction, so we've actually got an equilibrium established in here. And you can see, hopefully, that this ion, this in its pure form, is actually yellow. Obviously, this one's blue. And what we've got is somewhere in between. So we've got some of the blue still in there. Some of the copper hexa aqua 2 plus is still in there. But we've also got the CuCl4 2 minus in there. And so we've got a combination of those two colours, which is obviously green. There's a diagram of the, the new complex ion that's formed. And you can see it has a tetrahedral shape. So it has the bond angle of 109.5 between these atoms, 109.5 degrees. And the reason it's tetrahedral is because chloride ions are larger than water molecules and so physically you can only fit four round. So water molecules are much smaller and so we can get six round so we get the octahedral shape and chloride ions are much larger and so we get the tetrahedral shape instead with only the four ligands. The last one we're going to look at is the reaction between the aqueous cobalt 2 plus ion, that's what we've got in this test tube here. So this pink colour is due to the hexa aqua cobalt 2 plus ion. And we're going to react that with aqueous chloride ions. And again, I'm going to use concentrated hydrochloric acid as my source of these ions. So I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to add some chloride ions. Now you can kind of see what's happening. I'm going to have to add quite a bit of this. It's definitely changing colour. Do one more. Okay, so you can see that the test tube has, certainly here, definitely gone blue. We've got a colour change. We've had a ligand substitution reaction taking place. Before you watch the next part of the video, you might want to have a go at writing the equation for this one. So we've got chloride ions reacting with aqueous cobalt 2 plus ions. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So there's the equation. We've got cobalt hexa aqua 2 plus, which is pink, reacting with those four chloride ions, and that's in equilibrium with the complex ion COCl42 minus, and there's the six waters that have been replaced. Notice again, because it's chloride, then we only get four um, ligands attached because of the size factor. So we get this tetrahedral complex ion with the bond angle of 109.5.